Bishop Gregory Brewer's address to the 45th Annual Convention of the Episcopal Diocese of Central Florida discussed five marks of successful congregations. Is the missionary challenge to reach our neighborhoods, our world, with the gospel is before us. To most people outside the Episcopal Church, we are considered largely irrelevant to the pressing and acknowledged spiritual hungers. It's not that they're not there. They just don't think of us when they think about how can I get those questions answered. As some of you have heard me say repeatedly, my commitment is to see congregations succeed. So what do succeeding congregations look like? Brief point. Uh, I, you need to know that I actually crypt these from Bill Hybels, who gave a talk at Holy Trinity Brompton in London about this very subject. Number one, succeeding at succeeding congregations, people who are far from God come alive and are found in Christ. The question must always be in front of us as we are evaluating the effectiveness of our ministries is this, are lives being changed by the power of the gospel or not? If not, why not? And what do we need to do so that we can be more effective in actually seeing people come to Christ. Number two, alive and found people grow in Christ. They grow into maturity. Transformation happens when you come in contact with the Holy Trinity. You can't help but being touched by it. And that transformation is both personal and corporate. Congregations should start to look like Jesus in action. Luke 7, 22. Go and tell John that the blind see, the deaf hear, and the poor have good news preached to them. Number three, lonely people get drafted into biblical community, and they stop pretending. There can be an, art, an air of artificiality about our relationships in church, and especially about our worship. Church should not be a place where people pretend. It should be a place where people are loved enough to be real, and in so sharing what's really in their hearts, discovering the one who wants to fill their innermost being with his river of living water. Number four, people find a purpose that guides them through the rest of their lives. One's purpose in life is not merely to have enough money to retire comfortably, play games, and hang out with one's grandchildren. That's not bad. And while many are happy with that, even in this community, that purpose is just too small. Our world is desperate for people who can give their lives in the service of something far, far greater. I want to ask, will you begin to prayerfully consider what purpose God has called you to fulfill? It's bigger than you think. In fact, I want you to know, just speaking anecdotally, the more I press in, the more I continue to be surprised, both by how amazing Jesus is, far beyond anything I could ever ask or imagine, but the fact that I get to get in on God's purposes in the earth and see lives change, to see communities begin to be transformed. Because what we're talking about here is not only individual and evangelization. It has to do with challenging unjust structures. It has to do with being salt and light in the midst of your community. It's far bigger than anything that you and I ever think. And, but the only way we can get in it is, as Kevin said to us so clearly, is to step out and say, here I am, Lord, and see the doors that God opens in your life. Number five, people of means, both small and great, begin to seize the opportunity to financially and personally give of their time and their money to see their neighborhoods and their world change for the better through the power of the gospel. I want to say that if the goal of your stewardship program is to pay the light bill, you will not get much response. People give to vision. It's not that paying the light pills are unimportant, believe me, I get that. But church and churches should be known, in fact, as places who pay their bills on time. It is an incredibly poor witness to have creditors knocking on your door. But in the end, people give their time, talent, and their treasure to a vision that calls them to something greater. 
And that greater is making a difference in our world and touching our world with the love and mercy of Jesus Christ. Am I being clear? The gold is not merely renewed congregations. I put this out on Twitter this morning. The goal is a renewed world, renewed communities. So that, for example, at St. John the Baptist in Washington Shores, the goal is not to see St. John the Baptist come alive in Christ. It is that. But in the end, so that Washington Shores can literally be touched by the power of the gospel. It's not just that St. George's in the village can have a whole network of ministries that care about each other. It's so that as people literally move here from all over the country, they begin to know that there's an alternative to just lowering your golf score. It's bigger than that. <laughs> it's renewing, it's saying, God, I want to be available for you and for your purposes. How can I be a part of that? And we're talking money, we are talking time, it's servanthood. It's understanding, especially that if you're someone who is moving into retirement and you have some accumulated income, if you want to live in fear, this isn't on my script, I want to say it anyway. <laughs> if you want to live in the fear of keeping a very large nest egg just in case something might happen to you physically, and that's a big concern, I get that. I'm now old enough to begin to think about such things. But if that's all you're doing with your income, you're robbing God, it says in Malachi. We are called to give financially and personally, sacrificially. Again, <laughs> not to pay the light bill, but to literally make a difference in our world. And if that's not being held up in your church, then clergy and lay leaders, get with it. Or it may be that even if, you're, if your clergy and lay leaders can't hear that call, God's bigger than that. Go to him and say, Lord, what would you have me do? I believe God will show you. To have a congregation like that, though, requires leaders who are people of vision and also have deeply trustable integrity. They know how to articulate a vision. They know how to mobilize people to pray, learn, love, and serve together which takes us right back to the need of leadership development, continuing education, and raising up people to take our congregation into this new millennium with that kind of passion and vision.